Hey everyone, Victor is here and in this video I want to talk about the dash and wedge notation and the most common issues that many students experience when it comes to molecular rotations and making mirror images of the various molecules. So if you have your molecular model kit, you might want to pause this video and grab it, because you are likely going to need it to help you visualize the molecules we are about to discuss here. So if you want to follow along with me, you'll probably need a couple of molecular model kits like that, where you have a carbon and some other uh, colored atoms to signify different groups. So when we look at the molecule and when we are drawing it in 3D, we are going to imagine that a couple of bonds are in the plane of paper. So in my case here, the orange, black and the white balls, they're all in the plane of paper. The purple one right now is looking towards us. So we would show this one on the wedge while the green one, that one that is behind, we're going to show that guy on the dash. So it's going to be looking away from us. And here are a couple of important things that I want to point out right away. When we're working with this molecule, if I align that perfectly towards the camera where the purple one is looking towards the camera and the green one is looking away from the camera, well, we actually cannot even see the green one. So on paper, we are going to tilt our molecule a little bit to one side or likewise we are going to tilt it a little bit to the other side. So we can show it with the wedge a little bit on the right side and the dash a little bit on the left side or we can show wedge on the left side and the dash on the right side. But as you can see, this is literally the same molecule. I am just tilting that a little bit in space. So when I'm showing two versions of this molecule and I tilt my dashes and wedges likewise just a little bit, I am not actually drawing a different molecule. This is exactly the same molecule because I'm not really doing anything to it. And another important thing that I want to point out about drawing your dashes and wedges, as you can see, our both wedged purple atom and dashed green atom, they are on the same side of the molecule. So whenever you are drawing your dashes and wedges, those dashes and wedges got to be on the same side of the molecule. You should never write wedge on one side of the molecule and dash on the other side of the molecule somewhere over there. That just wouldn't make any sense from the purely stereochemical standpoint. So essentially, what I want you to remember is that if we were to draw two molecules like this, where I have my bromine looking at me in both cases and hydrogen looking away from me in both cases because hydrogen is on the dash, it doesn't matter which version I choose to draw, these are exactly the same molecules and these two drawings represent exactly the same thing. So when we are going to be rotating our molecule in space, it does depend how we are going to do this rotation. So here I have two versions of the same molecule, two copies. If I rotate my molecule along the vertical line, we can see that the purple one that used to be on the wedge now will be on the dash. And the green uh, atom that used to be on the dash is now going to be on the wedge. Likewise, if I'm going to rotate my molecule along the horizontal plane, so I'm going to do the rotation like so, I'm going to see the same thing. The purple one is now going to be on the dash and the green one is now going to be on the wedge. However, if I'm taking my molecule and I'm rotating that in the plane of paper like this, then in this case, uh, we're not going to see any changes with our dashes and wedges. So if now I take the molecule that I used in my previous example and I do different rotations with that molecule, I'm going to see similar type of results. So first, let's do rotation around the vertical plane like so. Well, in this case, I'm taking my molecule and I'm sort of spinning that in the plane like that, which gives me a structure looking like this. If I number my atoms 1 through 5 like this, where number 1 is the one that closes to the bromine, my atoms 1 through 5 are now going to look like this. And notice, since I rotated the molecule in space, 
Bromin that used to be looking at me now is looking away from me, while the hydrogen that used to be looking away from me now this guy is looking at me. And as I've mentioned before, it doesn't matter if I show my wedge or a dash like this or if I draw my molecule like so. What does matter here is that the hydrogen is still on the wedge and the bromine is still on the dash. How exactly they are tilted in space? that part is irrelevant for us. Likewise, if I did my horizontal rotation, I will end up with this molecule, where my carbon number one is still on the right side and carbon number five is still on the left side. And now, again, my hydrogen is going to be looking at me, while my bromine over here is going to be looking away from me because I flipped the molecule in space. However, if I do my final rotation where I do rotate my molecule in the plane of paper, I am actually going to do it in a slightly funny way. I am going to make a copy of my original. I will drag it down here. And since I am rotating that in the plane of paper, I am going to do... Whoop, just that. Of course, since it looks really silly, I'm going to redraw that in a proper way, rotating my bromine where it needs to be, uh, like this way. So now, because I rotated it in the plane of paper and whatever was looking at me before, my bromine is still looking at me and the hydrogen, which used to look away from me, still looks away from me. Now, where I see the most confusion in students is when we need to make mirror images and then rotate those guys. So again, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to start with our familiar example that we have already seen a couple of times today, and I'm going to make a few mirror images. Probably the easiest one and the first one that you are going to see in your course is going to be the mirror image when we are just reflecting our molecule along the vertical line, just like an ink blot on the piece of paper. So in this case, to make this mirror image, what I'm going to do, I will literally trace my molecule backwards, starting with a skeleton like this, then I will show my bromine atom looking at me, and I am also going to show this hydrogen atom looking away from me. Now, here is something important that I want you to pay attention to. You see how I arranged my bromine and hydrogen uh, over here where bromine is looking at me and it is slightly tilted to the left, and the hydrogen is looking away from me and it is slightly tilted to the right. Well, as we have seen earlier today, I can redraw this molecule like so, where I slightly tilt my bromine to the right and the hydrogen is now tilted to the left. And importantly, as we have seen before, this is exactly the same molecule. So, while my structure on the right side this guy over here might not necessarily look like an ink blot. It might not look exactly like the mirror image of the molecule on the left. It is, in fact, a mirror image. You can make this molecule with your molecular model kit and then just tilt one molecule in one direction and tilt the other molecule in a slightly different direction and see how it looks for yourself. And what I have seen on exams many times, instructors will purposefully do those type of mirror images where they tilt things in slightly opposite direction from how it looked uh, in the original image, and because of that you might think that this is no longer a mirror image, while in fact it is. So same way, I can make a mirror image if I'm using the horizontal line over here as my plane of mirror. In this case, I will start by mirroring the stem for my molecule, then I'm going to show the bromine looking at me like this and my hydrogen looking away. And again, I here do show my bromine and hydrogen literally mirroring my original molecule as an ink blot, but I don't have to do that. I can tilt my dash and wedge in the slightly opposite directions, doing it like this, and again, like in the previous case, these two dash and wedge representations, they represent exactly the same molecule. And of course, there is another very common way of making a mirror image, is using paper itself as a mirror. So if I'm using paper as a mirror itself, I'm going to start with my original molecule, and in order to make the mirror image, I would have to flip 
my dashes and wedges. So now the bromine atom over here is going to be looking away from me, while the hydrogen atom over here is going to be looking at me. And you probably know what I'm going to say at this point. I can take this molecule and I can redraw it like that, which represents exactly the same mirror image. So if there is one thing that I want you to remember from this video is that it doesn't matter how exactly the dashes and wedges are tilted, what is more important is that what exactly is on the wedge and what is on the dash. Like in this case over here, it's important that the hydrogen is on the wedge and it doesn't matter whether it's slightly tilted to the left or slightly tilted to the right and it is my bromine that is on the dash in both cases in my mirror image and again it doesn't matter whether it's slightly tilted to the right or to the left. So do keep that in mind when you're working with your mirror images or rotating the molecule in space because if you misinterpret the molecule that your instructor wrote or you misrepresent the molecule that you are writing, you are most likely going to be losing points because of that. But above all, the most important part, of course, is to practice. So to make sure that you are feeling comfortable with your rotations, with your mirror images and so on, what I suggest sit down, grab a few molecules from your textbook and literally just draw the uh, different mirror versions, try to rotate the molecule in space and if you need to, you have your molecular model kit to help you visualize that. So if you have finally understood what the dashes and wedges mean and how to work with them, boop that like button, subscribe to the channel, check out this video next and I'll see you next time.